I mean, this is a, a very alarming campaign, really, of harassment, targeting the small group of academics working on chronic fatigue syndrome, or ME. And it's included abuse and intimidation, death threats, vilification on internet websites, and also a series of official complaints alleging both personal and professional misconduct to universities, ethics oversight boards, uh, and the General Medical Council. But really, at its heart, it seems to be an objection by some activists to the association of chronic fatigue syndrome with mental illness, its characterisation as a psychiatric condition. Now, they claim the real cause is biological and want research to focus exclusively on identifying the as-yet-undiscovered virus responsible. One of those targeted is Professor Simon Wesley from King's College London. He's received a series of death threats and now has his mail routinely scanned for suspect devices. It's a direct intimidation in the sense of letters, emails, occasional phone calls uh, and threats, and but more often indirect intimidation through my employer, through the General Medical Council. And it's something that I'm just always aware of uh, with everything I do, that there are people watching and who will try and make life difficult. You say try and make life difficult. I mean, it's been pretty spiteful, hasn't it? I mean, there's a pretty malicious campaign. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, clearly I think it's maliciously unfair and unjustified and intended to hurt. All of it intended to denigrate and, you know, try and, as these campaigns do, to try and make you into a kind of a leper so that no one would have anything to do with this terrible person. I'm pleased to say that it hasn't <laughs> worked, but that doesn't mean that um, it hasn't uh, had some personal cost. And there were some personal threats in there as well, weren't there? Yes, there certainly have been. I mean, I've never been the target of violence, but I mean the target of threats of violence. And um, because of that, we've taken security advice and police advice. And, you know, we do quite a few of the things that um, the people in this institution who work with animals, for example, in animal research do uh, and take sensible precautions. And we're occasionally briefed on particular threats. You talked about a campaign there, and I'm, I'm really interested in what you think this is actually all about. What, what motivates these attacks? I, I think, sadly, some of the motivation here comes from people who really do believe that any connection with psychiatry and the world of psychiatry is tantamount to saying, there is nothing wrong with you, you are making this up go away, you're not really ill. Now, that's profoundly misguided. It fails to understand the whole nature of so many disorders, such as, you know, schizophrenia, autism, bipolar disorder, major depression, Alzheimer's, etc., which are psychiatric disorders, as classified, treated by psychiatrists, but are clearly serious primary brain disorders in all sorts of ways but they fail to understand the you know the organic nature of those conditions and instead they fall victim to the label and, and believe that the mere involvement of psychiatry denigrates them and denigrates uh, the condition and that's why you get uh, uh, people seem to latch on to the idea that there might be a virus involved and that yeah. we just you know it, 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 we haven't found the concrete cause mm. of this disease and people like you are in a big conspiracy to pretend that they're mm. all malingering yes uh, certainly you can feel almost the depths of the passion sometimes when genuinely people seem to prefer to be diagnosed with like a retrovirus a potentially incurable maybe even fatal illness rather than an illness which for which actually we do have some reasonable but not perfect treatments and that i think really attests to the strength of feeling here i would rather have an incurable virus than a potentially curable disorder if the cure or treatment involve any acknowledgement of the social or psychological. I'd rather have an incurable disease than a mental health problem. Well, yes, I mean, I think that's very sad because I think what it does do is it deprives patients of avenues of management that might be beneficial. And I think it's very sad if anyone listening turns their back on treatments that have been validated and been shown to help because of a belief that if I went down that route, that would mean I was making all this up. Be clear, Sarah. Um, this sort of personal intimidation that you've been describing is, I believe, completely unacceptable. And it's also counterproductive because it doesn't stop um, the type of research that you've been talking about going on and it puts good researchers off uh, I mean there's no there's no doubt about that but I think you've got to put this into the context of the fact that we have around about 250,000 people with this illness uh, a very tiny tiny minority of those um, people are involved in this sort of behavior 
But what people do have a justifiable complaint about is the uh, the fact that there has been very little or, or almost nil government-funded research into the biomedical aspect of this illness. And really all this stems from the fact the way that the medical profession has renamed and redefined the illness that we used to know as ME, which is myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is a symptom complex of muscle symptoms, brain symptoms, infective symptoms, to chronic fatigue syndrome, which is a much wider group of clinical presentations. And we have a whole spectrum of patients there who have an illness ranging from a physical illness at one end to a psychiatric cause of their chronic fatigue at the other. And it's rather like putting everyone who's got a chronic headache from migraine into brain tumours under a chronic headache syndrome and saying they all have the same cause, they all have the same treatment. And at the moment, we have the thing called the NICE guideline recommending only the psychological side of treatments, grade exercise, CBT, for people to whom these treatments in, in some cases just don't work and in case of graded exercise therapy, it makes them worse. So that, that's the context to the anger. Are you saying that the, the government's wasting money on its, the research that's being done at the moment? Well, I think the, the main complaint about the government funding to the psychological-based research is that a lot, that's, that's where all the government pot of money has gone. It hasn't gone to the biomedical research. This has had to be done by the, the charities. And most of this money has gone into CBT and graded exercise. And we spent a vast amount of money a few years ago, two, three million pounds on something called the PACE trial. And there were, I think, again, justifiable complaints about that because we felt it wasn't going to take tell us anything that we didn't already know and there are things that we do want to know about this illness. Okay well one of the things that came up and it was in Tom Fielden's report there is that there was a suggestion in the United States some years ago that there was a, a viral basis for this but it has not been replicated. There isn't a, a candidate virus that could be causing this is there? Um, well, I think you've misinterpreted what's going on with the virology of this illness, which is quite complex. What is agreed is that a wide variety of infections can trigger this illness. Glandular fever, parvovirus, hepatitis virus, Q fever infection. Where the debate is, is whether these viruses then persist in the body, and there is conflicting evidence there, but if these viruses, or some of these viruses do persist, should we then be looking at the use of antiviral medication, which is one of the things the Medical Research Council's expert group on pr uh, research priorities wants to look at, or should we just abandon all this? And those of us who want biomedical research want the answers to these different aspects of the illness. But we want to know more about the virology. We want to know whether virological treatments may be effective. But don't scientists want to know that? That's what seems illogical about this, is why would somebody well, be working uh, on something that was ineffective? Why would, somebody be, why would there be a conspiracy to avoid working on something that might produce results? Well, I, I think the point is the anger stems from the fact that this illness encompasses a variety of ologies, if you like. It invo involves muscle pathology, it involves brain, immunological abnormalities, endocrine abnormalities. And yes, there may be a psychological input to the illness in some people. But the, the, the anger, the frustration is the fact that all this effort, all this government funding is just, or has been, just going to the psychological side. You, you had ME, didn't you? Um, I got involved, like a number of doctors, with this illness uh, and really only changed my mind after contracting it myself following chickenpox, which I caught from one of my patients. But I came out of medical school, and I've heard this is where a lot of prejudice amongst the medical profession comes from, um, back in the, the early 1970s, being told at the Middlesex Hospital that this was hysterical nonsense. Go away, forget about it. It's an illness that doesn't exist. And that's what I believed before I actually contracted it myself. Could, are, are they not likely to be connected? Um, sorry, what, I'm, I'm, what I'm thinking about the sort of the, you talk about the virus and the psychological. I mean, they, there's a sort of such an objection to it having a psychological basis. But one wonders if there isn't a connection. Well, as I say, I, I think we are uh, uh, dealing with a spectrum, a wide spectrum of clinical conditions under this chronic fatigue syndrome 
umbrella. We have people that we originally called ME with their muscle, brain, infective type symptoms. We have people with chronic fatigue which doesn't come on following an infection which seems to appear for a variety of causes and we're mixing them all up and this is the problem. If we need to subgroup all these different people that come under this umbrella and in actual fact because we do now have a medical research council expert group on this, this is one of the priorities which we have identified, I'm a member of this group, to look at now from the research point of view so we can actually subgroup people with different types of fatigue and give them the right type of treatment but uh, until we find the causes of these different types of subgroups and the role of infection and immunological disturbance muscle abnormalities etc within the different subgroups we can't find effective forms of treatment and this is not what has been happening this is why people are frustrated we also I suppose you would accept have a tragedy that we have scientists leaving the field I don't want to see scientists leaving leaving the field. Um, I want to debate with scientists, and it's the way I feel we should do it. It's the way I do it. Scientific debate, criticism is healthy, but it should be conducted through the medical journals. It should be conducted through constructive criticism. Um, as, as I said at the start of this interview, intimidation, personal abuse and whatever has no role to play whatsoever in this whatsoever.